Welcome to another video. It's your favorite professor here, math professor here, Dr. Tarsia Hubert. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about grouped histograms. And I'm going to show you an example of what a grouped histogram is. And it's just basically creating a histogram with group data instead of individual data. And so let's jump right into our example. The following data represent the exit velocity in miles per hour for a simple random sample of 50 home runs here during the 2018 Major League Baseball season. And this came from StatCast. You see my source at the bottom. The source at the bottom is StatCast. And this is the data. And we want to create um, a histogram with group data with a first class having a lower class limit of 90 and a class width of 4. Okay. And so basically we want to construct a relative frequency distribution, construct a relative frequency histogram, and describe the shape of the distribution. All right, so let's jump right in and start on that. All right, so first of all, we have to start with our classes. So the lower limit of the first class is 90. Uh-oh, that's a 9. And then it said it want the class width to be 4. So that means I will add 4 to 90 to get 94 to get my second class lower limit. And then I will add 4 to that, 98 to get my next class lower limit. I would add 4 to that, which is 102, to get my next class lower limit. I would add 4 to that, which is 106, and add 4 to that, which is 110. And that is how I get my lower limits, by adding that class width to my first lower limit, okay? Now, this would go to 93, but because we have these um, tenths, these decimal places, we would say it would stop at 93.9. This one will stop as, since it stops at 98. This one will be, or the next one starts at 98. This one will be 97.9. This one will be 101.9. This one will be 105.9. This one will be 109.9. And if we had another class, the lower limit of it would be 114. So this one will stop at 103, I mean not 103, 113.9 because the next class will start at 114. So that's the one that's 113.9, all right? So now we have to find the frequency of each of those. And the frequency will be found by counting the numbers that fall into that range. So here we go. We got to do some counting. We want to count how many numbers fall in between 90 and 93.9. So let's start counting. So if I go down the first column, I don't see any. I don't see any in the second column. I see one in the third column. And then I see one in the second column. I mean, in the fourth column. So I think that is two. I only see two in that frequency or in that category, in that class. Now I want to count the numbers between 94 and 97.9. If I look in the first column, I don't see any. If I look in the second column, I don't see any. I see one in the third column, then 96.4. Then I see this 97.6, that's two. And then I see this 94.8, that's three. So I see three in this class. Now I want to count the numbers between 98 and 101.9. So I see one here. I see one here, two. One there, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, I see twelve in this class. Let me make sure I'm not missing any. I feel like I'm missing one. Hold on, let me double check. I'm looking through the numbers again. Oh, here we go right here, 13. So there's 13 in this category. Now I need to count the numbers between 102 and 105.9 between 102 and 105.9 so let's count those 
I see one here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Let me just double check and make sure I got them all. I believe that is all of them. There is 22 in this category. Now I want to count the numbers between 106 and 109.9. There is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there is eight in that category. And then the last category between 110 and 103.9, I see one here and one there too. So I've classified each of those into the categories, counted the frequency of them. And now what we need to do is calculate the relative frequency, all right? The relative frequency is going to be found by taking this number, and there there was 30 numbers total, or 50 numbers total, I mean, there's 10 in each row and there's 5, there's 50 numbers total, so I'm going to take each of these numbers and divide it by 50. So here we do 2 divided by 50, and that's going to give us our relative frequency, which is 0 0.04. Let's do that for each of them, 3 divided by 50. That gives you 0 0.06. You do 13 divided by 50. That gives you 0 0.26. Uh-oh. I zoomed in. 0 0.26. If you do 22 divided by 50, that gives you 0 0.44. If you do 8 divided by 50, that gives you 0 0.16. And then 2 divided by 50, we already did, was 0 0.04. And so this is what your, this is what your um, relative frequency distribution would look like. So we have all these numbers. And now what we want to do is we want to, so this is our relative frequency distribution. Now what we want to do is create a relative frequency histogram. Now before we create our relative frequency histogram, what I want to do is discuss the shape of the graph. So once you create your histogram, what we do is we look at the shape of the graph and we talk about whether it's skewed or not. And so there are four different categories of the shape that we can describe. And the first one is uniform distribution. This is when the frequency of each value of the variable is evenly spread out across the values of the variable. And I'll show you a picture of this in a minute. But right now we're just going to go through the definitions. Uh, we can also have a bell shape distribution. This is where the highest frequency occurs in the middle. And the frequencies tail off to the left and right of the middle. So it's kind of symmetric, kind of even on both sides. Then you can have what's called skewed right. This is where the tail is to the right of the peak and is longer than the tail to the left of the peak. And skewed left is the exact opposite, where the tail to the left of the peak is longer than the tail to the right of the peak. Okay, so verbally, that's what those mean. But let's see, as a picture representation, this is what they look like. This first image is uniform distribution. All of the distribution is kind of uniform throughout. This all and this one is exactly all the same, so we would say it's uniform. Now this one is what we call bell shape, and because we call it bell shape, because if you was to take um, a line and just kind of sketch it over your distribution, that line ends up looking like a bell, the top of a bell. Y'all see it? Yeah, see the little bells with the little ding dong. But the top of it looks like a bell, so we call it a bell shape. And it's symmetric. You see the highest frequency is in the middle, and then it kind of does the same thing on both sides as you go out. Now, this one down here is what we call skewed right. If you was to take the line and trace over the distribution, you kind of get a tail that's to the right. 
and that tail is longer than the tail on the left side so we say that's skewed right and then if we was to trace this one at the top you get a tail on the left side and that tail on the left side is longer than the tail on the right side so we say this one is skewed left so this is what it means to be skewed right left or bell shaped or uniform so now we can jump into drawing out our histogram all right so for our histogram since it's a relative frequency histogram then we know our largest frequency is one and we'll break basically break this down by making this 0 0.5 and this 0 0.75 oh i don't know why my thing keeps going zooming keep zooming I don't know what's happening with my screen yeah okay let me try it again let me erase this these extra marks and this was supposed to be 0 0.75 but my screen just started doing its own thing so 0 0.75 will be here and then 0 0.25 will be here that's a two and then at the bottom here is where we will have our category so it starts at 90 so I'm going to put 90 about right here. Then I'll have one at 94. Remember the class width was 4. So we would go in increments of 4 at 98, 102, 106. And these are supposed to be equidistant. 110, so imagine that they are. I try my best to make them equal. Distant between each other. And so then we would just graph. So we know that um, in 90, between 90 and 94, our relative frequency is 0 0.04. So if this is 0.25, halfway would be like 0 0.12. It's really 125. So 0.04 is going to be like down here somewhere. So we will draw a line from here to here and make a bar from there to there. 0 0.06 would be just a little bit bigger than that. Um, so about right here. That'll be your 0 0.06. And then from 98 to 102, it was 0.26. So it would be a little bit above the 0.25 line. And it'll look like that. From 102, 102 to 106, it was 0.44. So it'll be up here close to the 0.5 line. And I'm just kind of estimating. I know my numbers are a little off, but you get the gist of it. This should be going up to 0.44. And 0.5 is right here. So it might be a little too high. Let me just erase it. Because I did go a little too high. So let's erase it down to there. And then at 106 to 110, it was 0.16. So it's going to be back around here. And then there was one more category to 114. So 110 to 114 was 0 0.04, which was the same as that first class. So it should be pretty similar. All right. So your relative frequency distribution would look something like that. I did that by hand. It's kind of hard to do it on this computer but you get the gist of it that's what it would look like and then to describe the shape of it you would sketch a curve around there and see which one it fits into and that one looks like a bell shape it doesn't have any skewness to it so we would say this one is bell shaped all right and so this is how you would create a histogram using grouped data that means now instead of having just one value represented in these bars you have multiple values represented in these bars if you have any questions about this please don't hesitate to send them to me or put them in the comments and i will respond as soon as i give a get a chance thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video